Welcome to this video review and today I'm going to talk about uh, Heat Micro Lynx L15 thermal monocular. As you probably know, Hick Micro is a sub-brand of Hick Vision, one of the biggest uh, producers of surveillance um, equipment on the market. And I think 2017, something like that, they decided to go into outdoor and hunting market with their thermal cameras and thermal solutions. And their first series was OWL. Uh, we tested it extensively at that time. Uh, and I would say it was okay, it was not that bad, but for the first series, normally they, are, they were um, feeling the ground. Then the second series of thermal monoculars was the Lynx, which we see here. Then they came also out with the uh, Thunder clip on devices and Thunder um, um, standalone thermal rifle scopes. And now they have a whole range of products, also from digital night vision rifle scopes and so on. Um, <clears throat> when we talk about the Lynx series, they came out in 2020 when they were already rebranded from Hick Vision to Hick Micro. They're really small, light, very ergonomic. I would say uh, when you look at them like this, you see that they probably have seen the form factor of FLIR Scout TK. They are so small but normally much more powerful in terms of uh, optical performance. Um, so they are made out of plastic. They're made in China. They come with three years warranty. Um, they are IP67 uh, rated as uh, waterproofness, so they can be submerged up to one meter. They work from minus 20 to plus 60. And you, you can see that they are approximately 16 centimeters in length. And on this top part, they are around six centimeters of diameter. A really compact device, only 270 grams. Internal battery, unfortunately. Uh, a thread for the, for the tripod. And a type C charger for the internal battery. They do work really long time with inter internal battery. Please go uh, to our real battery life videos and you will see they work seven hours some of the models even work 10 hours it's just incredible but still the internal battery it's a downside yeah, you have to understand that interchangeable batteries are much much better they do have also video recording capabilities and uh, taking of photos and wi-fi capabilities so you are able to connect them with your smartphone and to to basically control them through your smartphones uh, when the battery runs out, you're also able to use the battery pack, external battery pack, or you just put the device on charge. Uh, if you talk about the sensor, the sensor inside is uh, the Hick Micro claims that they produce their sensor by their own, by themselves. Uh, 384 by 288, 17 microns of pixel pitch, 50 hertz of refresh rate, and what's really important, 35 millikelvins of NATD noise equivalent thermal differences that means that if two points on an image have a difference of uh, zero uh, of 35 millikelvins the device will already distinguish between these two points so that means that you really get good details with it it's a fixed focus as you're able to see 50 millimeter objective lens fast aperture they say that it's a aperture of one uh, the magnification is also one time and a four time digital zoom. Uh, the field of view is roughly 400 meters, 425 meters and 1000 meters. And the range of detection is approximately 530 meters. There are four color modes and it's easy to use them with glasses. You just need to, to adjust the, the diopter setting correctly. If you go to the display, uh, liquid crystal LCOS uh, display uh, 720 by 540 it's quite small 0.2 inch uh, when you look through it you see it's much smaller than the other models I would also like to say I forgot at the beginning that uh, there are two versions of Lynx monoculars Lynx and Lynx, Lynx Pro so all Lynx without Pro they still have a sensor with a 17 micron 
pixel pitch. All of those pro models have a 12 microns pixel pitch, so a different sensor. In returning, of, uh, if you go to the operation of the actual device, you have four buttons on top, soft rubber buttons, uh, short press and long press give you different options. Short press gives you, I think, modes and uh, uh, brightness. Long press takes you to the menu where you're able to, to adjust really a lot of things. Um, videos and photos can be uh, taken by this button, long press or short press, it depends what you wish. And there is an internal memory uh, with a size of 8 gigabytes. In the box you're not getting much, only a charging cable and nothing else. So they really don't give you not even a carrying pouch with it, just to cut the cost. The price of this device is uh, approximately 1000 euros. Okay, so we came to the point where I go through the sweet and sour of this device, what I think could have been done better, what I think uh, it's made really good. And then in the last part, I will go through the competition. What I think are the competitors uh, and normally final thoughts at the end. So what is really positive? Size and weight. So the form factor is great. It's really ergonomic. You can use it with left hand, with right hand and so on. Soft touch. So the form factor is really good. Also using with glasses, it's quite easy because of this soft um, eyepiece. The sensor. This device has a good sensor, especially they claim 35 mK, but still you see from the image quality that the sensor is, uh, is a good one. Uh, fast aperture lens, if uh, f1 is true, which I believe it is, uh, then normally you're getting a really good lens in this device. What is sour? PVC housing, 1000 euros, they could have made it out of magnesium. Internal battery. It is true that it holds for seven hours, but still interchangeable batteries would be a much, much, much better solution. Um, ready to use time. It's seven seconds to get the image and then 30 seconds that you're able to use the device. That's really long. Check our real startup time uh, blog posts and you'll see it. Um, Display resolution and size, 720 by 540 is not that much and when you look through it, the display looks small. So these are all the sour points. Normally it's a 1000 euros device. So what about the competition? There are really not many with 50 millimeter rejected lens and there are really not many with this price point, 1000 euros. So with 1200 euros, you're getting Poser Axion XM30F but it's, in, it's in completely another league in terms of the lens, in terms of the magnesium housing, interchangeable batteries, the image quality, everything. But okay, with Pulsar we know that they have, because they are so popular, they have huge problems of uh, keeping up with the production uh, to all the demand. So basically some people say it's better to, to buy something like this than to wait for one year to get a Pulsar. And I'm not joking, some people are waiting one year to get some posers. Okay, so what about else? You have Guide TD410, 19 millimeter model. Again, 1,400 euros, it's already 400 euros more expensive. It's really hard to compare. Bigger, heavier device and so on with interchangeable battery. Then you have Infrared Eye models with 19 millimeter objective lens and 13 millimeter objective lens. So those with 13 millimeter objective lens are really close to this one. I do think that this one offers a better sensor than on those and also better image quality. And the price is here, here, even though now lately the infrared models with 13 millimeter objective lens, they are priced even at around 700 euros, 800 euros. So they are a little bit cheaper. So what is my point here? That there is still not much competition in 1000 euros price class with a 15 millimeter objective lens. So this makes this device quite competitive honestly speaking. Especially like I mentioned when the Poser Axions are in such an scarce availability. Okay, thank you for watching. I hope you found this review useful and see you in the next one.